So many dog owners leave their dogs in the garden when they go to work. Why this is not a good idea, we will discuss with a little example from real life in today's episode of A Dog's Soul, an empath's guide to your dog's feelings. So stay tuned and have fun. All right. So I want to introduce you today to Ben. Ben was some kind of Romanian mix. He looked a little bit like some kind of hunting dog. I'm really not that good with breeds because I get a lot of mixed dogs in training, but some kind of hunting dog. And he came to me because he was spotted next to a dead deer and naturally the people assumed that he had killed it now nobody knew for sure because he was not bloody or anything but this is something that can really not happen right our dogs cannot just kill wildlife and this had happened when he got out of his garden and it was not the first time On another occasion, he got out as well and he did kill a flock of chickens from a neighbor. And, of course, people were not amused about that. I wouldn't be. I would be furious. I don't know what I would do to that owner if they were my pets. But this was really the last straw for him. The thing with the deer was the last straw for him. So there was already a lawsuit going on and they were living in a very small town and people were really upset. They called the owner names and it wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. The owner thought about moving. It was already that bad and she knew things had to change so she called me she already had three previous trainers for different issues ben was not an easygoing dog he was fine at home and fine with the second dog who really didn't like him but he was not fine on leash he would just go insane when he saw another dog and he was not a small dog either so not too big not too small but big enough so that his lunging barking and going crazy on leash was an issue for the owner as well not only for him of course it was an issue for him but the previous trainers had just told her to yell at him to tug on the leash, to block him, to basically correct the dog. The last trainer she were at was actually taught by an American trainer that is very well known from TV and that has caused various injuries to dogs and that is forbidden in my country. So he's not allowed to train dogs in this country because he's so brutal. And Ben's trainer was taught by him. So you can imagine what methods were used. And I tell you that because not only is it forbidden in my country to use those methods, but they put a lot of stress on the dog, right? So this was already something that put Ben into a very tricky situation. He was not a completely relaxed dog because he had to be on edge to be ready whenever he gets some kind of punishment again. And he wasn't feeling comfortable about meeting other dogs on leash, but he could not show anything because he was afraid of the corrections he would get right? That's why we don't use corrections in training. That's why we work on the cause and not just the symptom. But 
that alone would not have caused the issue with the deer, right? And it doesn't really matter if it was him or not. What matters is that he could get out of his garden. And nobody really knew how he would do that because it was a fenced in garden. It was a high fence and it didn't have any holes in it or anything, but he could get out anyway. So the owner guessed that it was just people coming to her house and leaving the garden door open because she never locked that. And of course, there is not that much we can do with training, right? Because Diona isn't there, so she has no influence on what Ben's doing. And we have a saying that goes like this, opportunity makes thieves. And this is kind of what was happening here. Ben was in his garden. He, for whatever reason, got out. And then he did what dogs do, right? I mean, he was a street dog before he came to his new family. And street dogs very often know how to get their own food. And most of the time they would just scavenge. But there was nothing to scavenge in this little town. It was a very clean little town. So he kind of did what hunting dogs do, right? So... I had to be a little bit honest or very honest with his owner about training not being the first thing we need to do. We need to change how Ben spends his day. First of all, there cannot be any strangers just coming into the garden. I mean, this is the most easy thing to do. She just had to lock her garden door. And after checking the fence, there was really no way he could get out easily. But he would, of course, bark like crazy whenever somebody walked by that fence. And that was another issue because people living in that street were pretty annoyed by it. Other dogs would chime in and it was a thing, right? There were small kids living on the street. They had to go to bed early but very often got woken by Ben and the other dogs chiming in. So this was another issue. So we had the freakouts on leash, the breaking out and hurting other animals and probably scaring people and the barking on the fence, right? So the most easy solution sometimes is just the right one. Ben did no longer spend his alone time in the garden because then he would just not be able to do two of three things, right? And that's awesome because if we don't want our dogs to practice the behavior we don't want, we have to prevent them from doing it, right? And this was just two birds with one stone. And what it also does, and that's why I'm telling you this story, is that alone time indoors is often a lot more relaxing than alone time outdoors. Because outdoors, there's just a lot more going on, right? Most people don't live in no man's land. So people walk by their gardens. Dogs walk by, cars drive by, there are birds and butterflies and maybe even cats coming into the garden and all those things. So relaxation is a lot more difficult and very often, let's be honest, relaxation in the garden is not trained. And yes, we can just train that, but there aren't that many advantages on leaving the dog in the garden alone. Yes, the dog can potty, but he could also do that with the dog door, right? And then he would at least have the option of going in and relaxing and getting away from all the stimuli, right? So what the switch from outdoor to indoor alone time did for Ben as well was 
that he got more relaxed overall. And Ben is just an example. I have seen that in multiple dogs. As soon as they got switched to indoor alone time, they were a lot more relaxed in day-to-day -day life. And that affected Ben's going crazy on leash very positively. He was very easy to train anyway, but his lower stress level showed very quickly. He was just not on the edge as much and he could get closer to another dog a lot more quickly. He could just listen to his owner a lot faster and a lot better. And of course, switching up the training techniques also did a lot for that, as it always does, because trying to train a completely stressed out dog is pushing a stone up the hill, right? It's really a lot harder than getting the stress level down first. And very often alone time in the garden is a big contributor to a high stress level. And that sometimes is a little bit tricky for people because they need to go to work. And if they leave the dog indoors, he can't pee or he can't go to the toilet at all, right? But the more elegant solution is to get a sitter who just brings the dog out for an hour and interrupts the alone time with that. It's easier for the dog if the dog is fine with people, of course, and it also helps with longer periods of alone time. If that's not possible, and sometimes it's not possible, then a doggy door can help. So just put in a doggy door, it's not that expensive. And at least the dog has a chance to go back inside. Or that would also be just a little thing we can do is not only put in a doggy door, but also use a little fence that you can put up that prevents the dog from running up to the normal fence. So there is a smaller area that is available to the dog when he's alone just so he can relieve himself and there is not that much going on in that smaller area. So he can just go back in and relax inside. But that is just a solution for dogs that really have to be completely alone for a longer period of time. And I think it's definitely worth working for toward the goal of being able to get a sitter at one point. Or for some dogs, it's even possible to come to the office. That's also great. Not for every dog, because again, it's not the most quiet environment sometimes. But for many dogs, it's easier than the garden. So those are multiple options, right? Getting a sitter or even family. Maybe somebody in your family has time during your work time and can watch your dog or at least stop by and let your dog out for a little potty break, give him some attention and then leave him again. Or you can do the doggy door thing, maybe with a second fence so the dog doesn't have that much space outside or taking the dog to work with you. And what often happens is that we tell ourselves we can't ask for that or we can't find a sitter or this is all too complicated or this is all impossible or whatever. And it's only impossible if we don't try, right? Maybe there is no sitter in your area. Maybe you don't have family who can watch your dog. Maybe your boss will actually say no to having a dog in the office. And maybe your landlord doesn't allow dog doors if he has to know. But what are the odds that none of that works, right? So try to get a little bit creative. And I know that sounds hard, but sometimes 
if we really want something, the solution we did not think of comes to us in one way or another. So, yeah. And if we want our dogs to cope well with our day-to-day -day life, we need to get the stress level down as much as possible. And of course, there is stress in everyday life. That's normal. Our stress levels go up and down and up and down. And that's natural. What's not natural is for the stress level to stay up and go further up and up and up and not that much down. <laughs> that's something that becomes a health issue at one point. So everything that contributes to that, and that includes training methods and alone time in the garden or even alone time the dog is not comfortable with. So separation anxiety, huge factor. And sometimes we see that in different areas in our lives that we didn't even connect with the situation itself, right? So dogs who go crazy on leash quite often have an issue with separation anxiety. And as soon as that's resolved, the issues on leash become a, lo a lot less intense. Happens all the time. It was not the case with Ben because Ben actually was fine alone. He, on one hand, got a little bit bored in his garden because nobody was doing anything with him. He was barked irregularly, but he was barked. But on a short leash in an area that did not interest him that much. And it was always stressful because, again, of the training methods that were used also for leash walking. And he saw an opportunity. And that just made him do what nobody wanted, right? So why don't you tell me in the comments if you're watching on YouTube where you leave your dog and why? And if you know anybody who's struggling with a dog that just seems a little bit stressed out and is left alone in the garden regularly, send him this episode. Together, we can help even more dogs and their people to live a stress-free or at least a more relaxed life together and just have fun. And that's what I wish you today. Have fun with your dog and we'll see each other next time. Bye. Thank you.